Okay. Um, so now we have a formula as opposed to just a description. Description is a great, uh, that's, you're like 90% of the way to a formula if you have a description of how to do something. Uh, so did everybody figure out how many sides this thing has? That's 5,580 total degrees. I've heard from all three of these guys already. Charlie? 33 sides. 33 sides. Anybody agree? Disagree? Alright, Charlie, tell us how you found 33 sides. Um, I divided 5,580 into by 180, and then I got 31, and then I added 2, and then I got 33. Okay, why'd you divide by 180? Because each triangle has 180 degrees, and you're dividing it by triangles. So you're thinking that this is a total of a sum of a bunch of triangles, angles. So let's divide it by how many angles, or how many degrees, sorry, are in a triangle. We'll find the number of triangles. And then I know that the number of triangles is two fewer than the number of sides, so we'll add two and we'll get 33 sides. What do you think about that? Okay, let's see how the formula works with that now. Can I use the formula to solve for the number of sides? If so, where do I start? To use the formula, where, where would I start with the formula to figure out the number of sides? When we use a formula, there's something we don't know, we're trying to figure it out, and there's something that we do know that we can you know, tell the formula that this is what I know. Josie? So you would do S, which is like your number of degrees, right. divided okay. by 180 still? Well, let's just plug it into the formula. Okay. Right, we're starting to solve algebraic equations here pretty soon. so. Let's start with, um, not 180, but 5,580 degrees. That should be the result of taking 180 and multiplying it by the number of sides minus 2. Right, you see? Okay. You're going to see, we're going to do, like there's a, in algebra, we're going to solve the equations. There's a lot of solving equations in algebra, okay? In order to solve equations like this, we've got to start to get some practices down. Maybe we call best practices, all right? Where I approach every problem in a fairly similar way. As simple as this might look, I'm going to approach it in the same way as is a very complex equation, okay? Um, what I mean by that is you're not going to just plug numbers in for n and see what finally works. It's a good starting place, okay? But it is not a good practice in general for algebra. The people who refuse to listen to what I'm saying right now, and there are some every year, they really, really struggle later on, okay? And throughout the rest of their math career because they think that every equation can just be guessed and guessed and guessed and guessed and guessed and guessed and, guessed and then they finally figured it out, okay? Time for guessing is uh, maybe at the beginning of a new topic, and then we put it to bed. We don't guess anymore, we use algebra, okay? So here's something I know. I know like this is a number, right? I don't know what this is, but I do know that if I subtract two, I get some number that I'm gonna multiply by 180, right? So this number here is, <coughs> okay, this number, it's like a number of triangles, right? I'm gonna multiply that by 180, get 5580, okay? So now you can kind of think of it like Charlie was saying, this is just a sum of a bunch of angles of triangles, right? So I need to break it all up into how many triangles is it, right? So she said, well, I'll divide it by 180. That's just maybe, just intuition. That just makes sense. I'm gonna divide it up into 180. Well, the way we, we do this in an algebraic uh, approach is we're going to divide both sides by 180. Right? So if I have 180 times a number and I divide that by 180, okay? Well, then I really I just have part of it is 180 divided by 180. What's 180 divided by 180? One. one. So I just have one times the parentheses, which is just the parentheses. And minus two equal. Okay, well this side is 5580 divided by 180, which we were already given is 31. Here's a number I want, there's a number of sides, 
right? Well, I know that if I take that, I subtract 2 from it, I get 31, right? So your intuition would just say, oh, that number must be 33, right? I subtract 2 from 33, I get 31. The, the algebra approach, as simple as this idea might be, the algebra approach, maybe a little, with a slightly more effort here, we're going to say that a number minus 2 is equal to some other number. Well, if I add 2 to negative 2, what's negative 2 plus 2? Zero. Zero. So I don't have anything there. So whatever happens, I have n, right? Let's see, this is an equation. What does, what does this mean? It's got to be equal. It's got to be equal. I just, I just added 2 to this side. Add two to this side. Is that a new idea for you guys? No. Not a new idea. Okay, so you guys have added things to both sides of an equation before. Yeah. Okay? So 33 is my number n. Okay. So here, it just makes sense. Okay, we'll split that into 180. So groups of 180, we get 31 of those. That's the number of triangles. Add two to that. I get the number of sides. Here's an algebra approach. This is an algebra class, so we're going to figure out how to write equations and then solve them to find the solution we're looking for. Um, but in looking at some of your homework, I can see that um, just simplifying algebraic expressions is something we need a little work on. Okay, so we're going to work on that a little bit. I'm going to pass these out. Um, I do want to give you a little bit of uh, helpful feedback about your notes. I don't know what you guys are doing with notes, but I know that some of my classes are uh, kind of struggling to understand what notes are for. What are notes for? First of all, Grady, help us. You want them to practice a little bit, to look back on it. To look back on it. Right? However you use it exactly, it's up, kind of up to you, but you should have them to look back on, okay? Just the act of writing them down is not the end of notes life cycle. You look back on your notes, okay? You should be writing them in a way that makes sense to you. You should also be writing them in a place, in a way that you can keep them for later, okay? You should keep them in a composition book, that's nice. Keep them in a spiral notebook, that's good. If you just rip it out of your three ring binder, now I've got this piece of paper that's very hard to keep track of. If I put it in a, even that ripped piece of paper into like a, a, a pocket, okay? That pocket's not gonna hold a lot of papers. It's not gonna hold an entire year's worth of notes, okay? So that's not a great practice. But I think it's really good is a three ring binder that if you must take the paper out, you take it out nicely, you open it, take the piece of paper out, or you just keep the three-ring binder on your note, on your uh, on your desk, okay? And that way, the notes that you take from today, you could uh, date them and know when they came from. And when I pass this out, right, then you can stick that in there with your notes. If you wanted to, I've got a three-hole punch, and you could three-hole punch this and put it right in there with the notes that you took today. So this is the notes that I took today, this is the work we did today, and it all stays together for later reference, okay? And then when it comes time, at the very least for tests or whatever, you can look back on all that stuff that you've done, review it, study, and be ready, okay? So as you're taking notes, keep in mind that you're gonna wanna hold on to them. And however that works for you, do that. Don't just write it down and throw it out. Forget all about it. Okay. Let me pass these out. I want you to start on these with uh, numbers 1 through 8. eight. I'm going to be walking around, seeing how everybody's doing. Are you ready to move forward or you need to spend some more time on some things? something like well, 9 minus 4 is 5, so 5R. Okay. Common mistake. But it's a mistake. So how do we work together to figure out how we can 
and not make this mistake anymore. We've got to understand why it's a mistake so we don't make a mistake anymore. Sean? Because you can't um, subtract, add, multiply, or divide on an R with a number that doesn't have a, the same. I would say some of that's true, but we can multiply and divide. Adding and subtracting, you cannot add or subtract these two terms, but why? Great. Well, they have to have the, the same variable or letter, I guess, same variable. Okay, so if I don't see that same variable on both of these things, then that's one way a little test for connecting these things together. No, I can't, so I won't. Okay, but why can't they go together? It's because they don't have the same letter. Why is that? Because um, uh, you can't, like if R was five, then it would be, uh, four R would be like 20. Okay. And then you, but nine, Okay, so there is a, a, a way of showing a little bit more of why you can't put these together. Because doing this to some number is not the same as doing this. Okay? They're not the same thing. And just to go into Cadence's specific example, he's saying try it out. Try plugging in 5 for R in that expression and try it in this expression. If 9 minus 4r is the same as 5r, they should do, and this is something that not everybody grasps, they should do the same thing. They should create the same new number when you plug something in for r. Right? If this is a formula, then they should give you the same answer. Okay? So this is 9 minus 20. We get negative 11. And here, 5 times 5 is 25. They should both give us negative 11, they should both give us 25, they can't give us two different things. Okay? So we can see that they don't do the same thing. Equivalent expression should do the same thing to whatever number you throw at them both. Yes. I also realized 4R is a, like a multiplication thing. Yeah. Like you can multiply 4 times 5 before you minus 9. So like mm. 4 minus Good observation. So, uh, the, like, it's a different kind of an argument coming from order of operations, right? Multiplication needs to happen before subtraction. But I'll never know what 4 times r is until I know what r is, right? So this multiplication has to happen first before I can subtract it from anything. And I can't multiply it, so I can't subtract it. I'm just kind of stuck. See what I'm saying? stuff you can't really subtract it. I don't know what the product of this is and I can't subtract until I know what this product is. Good, two good arguments. Try plugging it in, you see, it's not the same thing. To take a number and multiply it by four then subtract that from nine is not the same as just taking that number and multiplying it by five. Okay. Looking at it from the other way, I have to multiply these before I can subtract, but I can't multiply because I don't know what R is. So I'm stuck. I can't do anything. I cannot move on. This cannot be more simple than this. Okay, any other explanation of why those can't go together, why they can't be combined? I like both of those. I've got at least one more. Okay, let's just look at what these things are. Okay, addition and subtraction, it's combining of things, right? I look in, in this, well, I go into my daughter's playroom and I tell her to clean it. She screams and cries and says she can't or she's too tired or whatever. And I say, look, let's just make this easy. You got stuffed animals, right? Same kind of thing. You got play food, right? Plastic food that goes in the little kitchen. You have uh, things for dress up, right? So she goes, she adds all those things together, right? She's not looking for numbers. I mean, she's just looking for all the, the, the stuffed animals. She collects them together by the kind of thing that they are. And she goes over to the play food, she collects them together by the kind of thing they are. And the, the dress up stuff by the kind of thing that they are. They all go together, they're the same kind of thing, 
right? These are not the same kind of thing. Right? This is like stuffed animals. This is like play food. You don't put those together. They're not the same kind of thing, okay? But that's not what they are. That's an analogy. What is this nine of? This is nine of a, of a thing. What thing is it nine of? Nine ones. Nine, nine number ones, right? I add up nine ones, I get the number nine, right? So this is nine ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think I did. That's nine. Nine number ones. All those little marks are the number one. Okay? And this, let's just forget the negative for just a second. This is four of something. What is this four of? R's. Four R's. Now that I see them as what they are, right? I would not collect them together. They just don't mesh. Okay? I got nine number ones and four R's. Whether I'm adding, trying to add or subtracting doesn't make any sense. They're not the same kind of thing. Okay? Clear on that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, good three different explanations. They don't do the same thing, right? If I, if I think these two things are equal to each other, then they should do the same thing, but they don't. Uh, multiplication has to happen before subtraction, and it can't because I don't know what R is, so it just needs to just hang out, just stay. Stay as 4R, stay as 9, 9 minus 4R. It cannot be simplified anymore. Or, these are nine ones, these are four R's, they're not the same kind of thing, and we don't, that's what like terms comes from, right? You might think of like terms as, oh, this has an R on it, this has an R on it, so they're like, that gets us into trouble because people don't fully understand what it means for things to be alike, okay? So if you go into more detail on that, nine ones, four R's can't go together, okay? Um, so that's, that's a common mistake I was seeing as I walked around. Let's look at something like number, I think it was two. B minus three plus six minus two B. I've got all these variables and stuff, all right? Let, let's just look at a simple string of numbers that we're going to add together. Just completely made up, not directly linked to this. So nine plus seven minus eight plus 13. That's essentially what we have here. We have like, if we look at this as a thing, this is a thing, right? we're just really wanting to add a bunch of stuff up if possible. Right. Now with this, the order of operations would tell me add nine plus seven, get that answer, subtract eight from that, get that answer, add 13 to that. Do I have to do it in exactly that order? No. no. How could I do it in a different order? Sean. You could do 8 plus 13, 9 plus 7, and then subtract the two, those two. Mm, that, that gets a little bit tricky. And that, that's kind of what I wanted to address here. Can I do 8 plus 13? 8 plus 13. It'd be negative. You get 21. It'd be negative 8. Okay, negative eight plus 13. So it's a little bit more like 13 minus eight. Okay, but that's fine too, right? This negative, well, see this less as an operation of subtraction and more of a sign on the number eight, negative eight. Okay. So if we rewrite this as nine plus seven plus negative eight plus 13, now we see this as a, as a number negative eight, right? We can just throw these all, all together in any order we want, right? That's a property of addition called commutativity. Commute, right? If your parents commute to work, they drive to work, they move, they go somewhere, right? So commutativity means we can move these around. I could do nine plus 13 if I wanted to, right? And get uh, 22. I could add seven, negative eight, and that gives me negative one. And together we get 21, right? And the same thing goes over here. Say I can write this as b plus negative three plus six plus negative two b. Okay, now I'm really just adding up a bunch of numbers. Okay, I see this as a one little unit there because it's multiplied together, and as Caden said, we'd have to multiply those together before we could uh, move forward with that. Uh, so well, I got these two guys here. For one thing, some of you are missing this negative sign and getting nine. It's not nine. So negative three plus six, what's negative three plus six? Three. Three, it's positive three. Okay, I can slide this guy over here, b plus negative two b plus three. 
What's B minus 2B? Negative 1B. Negative B plus 3. Negative B plus 3. Now, we can put B's together to get negative 2B, or sorry, negative 1B? Yes. Why? They're the same thing. What are these? B's. What are these? B's. Can I put B's and B's together? Yes. Okay. Just like I can put stuffed animals together and play food together. Right? They're the same kind of thing. Right? And to multiply a number by 1, multiply the same number by negative 2, and add that together, that's the same as just taking the number and multiply by negative 1. Right? A little shortcut. Alex? Um, I thought the, the answer, oh, never mind. I mean, I thought the um, and negative b plus 3 is the same as 3 minus b, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the same thing. Um, let's see. Okay. Take a look back at those. Let's um, together, let's look at one of these. I'm going to give you some of these to take home. Let's look at, I think we've already talked about it, but it just didn't seem to hit home yet. 21. 1 plus 7 times 1 minus 3p. Now we've talked about this a bit, but maybe it just hasn't quite sunk in all the way. All right? You might think, well, I would need to plug a number in for B. That's kind of where we were with uh, when we did those number tricks. And you thought, well, if I, until I know what that, that number B is, I can't really do anything with this. But then we learned about, or reminded ourselves about, what we could do with this expression, even though it looks like. Like, these can't go together because they're not like terms, right? They're different things. And then this one, I can't add the one to the 7 because the 7 is supposed to be multiplied by the answer inside the parentheses first, right? So. What do we do about it, Sean? I use the distributive property. Okay. Who here is really familiar with the distributive property? Okay. Like somebody's giving me this. That's good. Okay. You need to understand about the distributive property. Did I show you the rectangle and the area model and how distributive property works? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You looked at that? Yeah. Sounds like we need to look at it again. Let's take an example of a distributive property. If I were to use a distributive property, you would get 1 plus 7 times 1 is 7, minus 21b is 7 times negative 3b is negative 21b. Okay. Uh, let's say we have 5 times x plus 4. This should come out to be 5x plus 20. But that's not exactly what we're concerned with. We want to see why that must be. Because why don't I just do it times x? Why don't I just do it times 4? Why is it times both? Well, it's, uh, well, it's just like saying 5 times 20. Okay. And you get the 20 to then correct the parentheses. But there's two things in the parentheses, so it's times both. I don't really know how to explain it. Here's a question. So if, I multiply, if I'm supposed to multiply it by both of these things, what if it was 5 times uh, 4 times x? Should I multiply the 5 by the 4 and by the x? Yes. Nope. Nope. No. Okay. Not just because it's multiply, not just because it's add. That was our bell. How about um, do 9 through 15? That's your homework when you come back on 9 through 15. If you did it, you're done. Okay? Wow.